It's great to be here. It's my first visit as well to Serenby, and what a wonderful place. I got up early this morning and hiked around on some of the trails and uh, enjoyed some music last night in the uh, venue, the Blue something or other. Uh, it, was, it was great. And uh, I love to see the clustered houses. I took a few photos yesterday afternoon to uh, it'll help illustrate my presentation. So I'm going to talk this morning about a number of things. Low energy homes, uh, how to you know, actually eliminate heating and cooling bills with net zero energy. We'll talk about healthy homes, uh, what, makes, what it takes to create homes that will keep our families safe and healthy. I'll talk a little bit about water, uh, which is a critical issue that's not focused on enough these days. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about resilience and. Uh, the way, the, the idea of creating homes and communities that will keep us safe in the event of some sort of disaster or extended power outage or problem like that. <clears throat> it's uh, wonderful to see here the landscaping that uh, supports butterflies and other species. I took that uh, yesterday late afternoon. Okay, uh, net zero energy. We, we hear a lot about that. It's a, a great concept. My wife and I in Vermont are actually building a house right now which will be net zero energy. And that means that you're uh, first reducing your heating and cooling loads and your electrical consumption as much as possible. And then supplying that energy with uh, energy that's produced on site. So in this home and, and Serenby just uh, just down the street here, there's a row of uh, photovoltaic or solar electric panels on the roof and uh, coupled with highly efficient heating systems such as uh, the Bosch geothermal heating system. Um, we, we have a selection of products that I'll be talking about a little bit uh, from tankless water heaters to heat pump water heaters to uh, efficient appliances like induction cooktops. By keeping those loads as low as possible, we can actually create an all-electric house, so no fossil fuel combustion in the house, which helps with uh, keeping it healthy, which I'll talk about a bit. But we can then supply that reduced energy demand uh, just with the solar panels on the roof. There are a lot of ways to achieve an energy efficient building envelope and that's always the starting point to achieve net zero energy. It's possible to do it with standard construction and then you know a massive solar electric system. I always argue strongly to you know do the heavy lifting with energy conservation. You know get the loads as low as possible so that then a modest size solar electric system can supply the needed energy. In the house we're building in Vermont, uh, I used, uh, used it as an opportunity to try out a lot of the innovative and some would say weird building products that I've been writing about for 25 years. Uh, pictured here is a product called foam glass, a cellular glass product that uh, has no uh, flame retardants in it, no volatile organic chemicals that can off gas. It's totally impervious to termites. It's been made by Pittsburgh Corning since the 1930s. It's primarily used in industrial applications in this country for very high temperature uh, uh, insulating. But in Europe, it's actually used quite a bit for insulating homes. And I like it because it avoids the, the chemical constituents in most of the foam plastic insulation products. Uh, we tried out another innovative product. This is a spray fiberglass product made by Johns Manville. Uh, they call it the spider product. And it sprays into an open cavity. We used it because in our roof we're aiming for very high energy performance, uh, R60 in the roof, and uh, using the, these 16 inch deep rafters which are made from scissor joists. Uh, and this insulation an, an acrylic binder is sprayed onto the fibers as it's injected so it can stick to surfaces and uh, stay in place without netting or other uh, material to, uh, to facilitate the installation. Then this will be covered up with uh, drywall and finished as a normal house. You know, here it is before drywall went up. 
<clears throat> there are lots of ways to create an energy efficient building envelope. Uh, I showed you a, a frame construction in those last photos. This is structural insulated panels. Uh, there are lots of ways to do it. Uh, in this climate, we're focused more on reducing cooling loads in the summer than on reducing heating loads in the winter, though both are very important. And the same strategies apply to both. We want a good, well-insulated building envelope. Uh, we want good, high-performance windows. And we want tight construction with mechanical ventilation providing the fresh air. Uh, we did some innovative air sealing systems. This is the uh, spray acrylic product that gets sprayed into cracks. Uh, it's made by Knopf insulation, um, and it's an acrylic material that uh, helps to air tighten the house. As we were doing this, we were curious of what difference it would really make. So we actually used a, um, what's called a blower door, a device that pressurizes or depressurizes a house and allows you to actually measure the air tightness of the home. And as we did that uh, air tightening, the, the air leakage dropped from 950 cubic feet per minute at this uh, elevated pressure difference, 50 pascals, down to 640. So it made a pretty dramatic difference, uh, which surprised me. Uh, windows, we used a, a mix of different window types. Uh, these are the really about the highest performance windows made in America. These are made by Alpen window. And they have uh, two layers of glass and then two suspended plastic films. And one of the layers of glass and both films have low emissivity coatings on them. These are special heat reflective coatings that uh, help keep the heat in. Also, the, the gas fill here, a lot of windows today, instead of being filled with air, have a low conductivity gas in them, like argon, that uh, reduces the, the heat flow through that window. These ones use a different type of gas that's even higher performance called krypton. Not kryptonite that uh, Superman used, but krypton. It's a, an inert gas. And they ship with these bladders of krypton and little fill tubes that uh, connect to the, uh, the inner glazing space. And that allows them to be shipped over the mountains. These are made in Colorado. They get shipped to high elevation and then back down. Without this bladder that allows the, um, the pressure to equilibrate, the windows would be blown out or the, the gas would be lost. So it's a strategy that Alpen windows developed to uh, ensure that the air and, and low conductivity gas don't mix. And then on site, the little very thin fill tube gets crimped, which is squeezed tightly closed in a number of locations, and then tucked into the, the uh, weather stripping here in the window unit. But anyway, the, as a result of all this high-tech stuff, these windows insulate to R12 in the center of the glass, you know, which is extraordinary, because these are windows that you see through. You know, they have the normal functionality of windows. They actually allow uh, a lot of sunlight in and passive solar heating. The uh, solar gain is still about 50%, which is you know, very good. So the, the coatings that we used with these windows uh, allow a lot of sunlight through and a very good visibility. OK, uh, a key strategy, particularly in the, in the South, of course, is passive cooling and you know, keeping a house comfortable. And one of my, I'll talk about this a little bit later on, but uh, Craig mentioned resilience and resilient design. And one of my uh, interests in that came out of work I did following Hurricane Katrina in 2005 in advising on the reconstruction that was going to be happening in the Gulf Coast. And trying to solve the problem where after the storm, you know, even people that weren't flooded so could you know, be in their homes, um, we found that the newer homes built since, say, the 1940s or 50s with central air conditioning were basically unlivable. Because these were homes that were designed to rely on, on electric air conditioning. Older homes 
that were built prior to the advent of air conditioning used what we refer to as vernacular design, design that makes sense for the climate it's in. So these homes, uh, like uh, homes you'll see throughout the Serenby community, have deep porches. Uh, these porches shade the windows so you don't get direct sunlight coming into the windows. They're often designed for ventilation airflow. They have tall ceilings. So even without electricity, they'll maintain reasonably comfortable conditions. And this led to work on resilience and what I was often calling passive survivability. You know, homes that will maintain livable conditions in the event of loss of power or loss of heating fuel or other problems. Uh, so there are you know, many strategies for natural cooling. You know, this shown here is a very simple uh, sun shutter uh, that has a dual, fo dual purpose. This I took in uh, Matt Lachey, Florida, but it's a simple shutter that blocks sunlight in the summer, even though you can still see through it. The slats are designed in that way. But then it can also be closed and offer hurricane protection in the event of an advancing storm. Um, this is the inn at Serenby, another illustration of this, this deep porch that uh, allows you to uh, maintain this outdoor living space and, and shade the windows from that direct sunlight to keep the building cooler. Interestingly, uh, I learned not too long ago that the traditional light blue, sort of robin's egg blue that porches are painted at the ceiling has to do with flies, uh, controlling flies, and I don't know exactly how that works, but uh, it's done up in Vermont as well as uh, here, apparently. Uh, another strategy for low energy homes is passive solar heating. Uh, this is relying on natural elements like windows, south facing windows to bring solar heat into the space and designing that space so that when you don't want that heat, it's excluded through shading systems or awnings. And also, there are uh, components in the house like a, a heavy masonry floor or a brick chimney or facing wall that store that heat, thermal mass. That's a very important strategy with uh, passive solar gain because you don't want it to just heat up the space too much during the daytime and you want it to retain some of that heat and slowly cool off at night. 